Okay, so welcome to this next video uh, on uh, platelet adhesion activation and aggregation. Okay, so we've discussed how uh, if the endothelium gets disturbed, the platelets are going to have access to the basolateral sides of the cell, and in particular, they are going to have access to this von Willebrand factor. And this becomes very, very important. So let's say we have some von Willebrand factor here. Basically, the platelets have in their membrane a receptor which can bind to von Willebrand factor. So here, uh, which I'll colour in, here, this orange box, not orange yet, but now orange, is a protein which can bind to our von Willebrand factor here. So this is our von Willebrand factor. And this protein has a rather fantastic name. It is called glycoprotein 1b, and it, as if that wasn't enough, it's then got the title 9-5. So glycoprotein uh, 1b, and then it's 9-5, like so. But often people don't like that, that's a bit of a mouthful, so instead they reduce it to GP1B95, which is a truly fantastic name. Um, so basically, this is a protein which sits in the membrane of thrombocytes, or platelets, and basically it can bind to von Willebrand factor. And when you get endothelial disturbance, that is what happens. The uh, GP1B95 binds to the von Willebrand factor. So let's show that happening. So what's going to happen is, actually I won't draw it up there, we'll draw it down here. So here is our endothelial cell here, and here is our von Willebrand factor, and here is um, the glycoprotein 1B95, uh, and the heart with our platelet now attached. So basically, what has happened is that the platelets have bound to this exposed and interrupted and disturbed endothelium, basically. Uh, so this process of the platelet binding to this disrupted endothelium is known as platelet adhesion. So the, the, And it's mediated by von Willebrand factor interacting with this glycoprotein 1B95. So this is platelet adhesion. Right. Okay, so I will get another piece of paper and we'll now talk about what happens next. Or can we, no, well actually we can stay on this piece of paper for now. We'll get another piece of paper in a moment. Basically, what happens when uh, platelets have been, uh, have bound to the von Willebrand factor? The next step is that they need to activate, basically. Uh, and there are two things that can activate um, platelets. It's not them binding to von Willebrand factor. Von Willebrand factor and the GP1B95 interaction is just to bind the platelets. That's platelet adhesion. That's done now. We're finished with von Willebrand factor for now, anyway. Um, what happens now is that the platelet is activated by other signals. And one of the signals that it can be activated by is the collagen, the exposed collagen in this extracellular matrix. Oh, well, not just the extracellular matrix, this basement membrane here as well. So you have the basement membrane that the platelet is exposed to, uh, which has collagen in it. It might also be exposed to the, basal, uh, to the extracellular matrix beyond. So this is the basement membrane. It could be exposed to the extracellular matrix beyond because, you know, you've got a hole in this uh, endothelial um, endothelium, this tunica intima, so the, it will have access to the tunica media where there is extracellular matrix. So um, collagen can activate uh, platelets, and that collagen, oh dear, collagen, sounds like some toothpaste make, collagen, um, and uh, collagen uh, can come either in the form of the basement membrane, which is most likely, or it can come from the extracellular matrix. Okay, and basically, when collagen binds to its receptor on the platelet, that causes the activation of uh, the platelet. There is another way to activate the platelet, uh, which is uh, tissue factor, basically, can also activate the platelet. So the platelet has 
a one collagen receptor, which is actually a G protein coupled receptor, so a seven transmembrane receptor. So here's the collagen receptor here, but there is another G protein coupled receptor, which I'll put down here. So there's the other G protein coupled receptor. So let me just um, highlight these up. This one is the collagen receptor in pink, and then we've got another one down here in red, which can be activated by tissue factor, basically, or factor three. So, uh, somatic cells have tissue factor in their cell membrane. Cells in this tunica media, or even worse, if it's gone through to the tunica adventitia, will have uh, tissue factor in their cell membranes. So it is plausible that this platelet will come into contact with tissue factor, and that that tissue factor will activate it. Okay, so now we've um, discussed the basic mechanisms of activation. Let's have a look at what activation actually means. And for this, I'll need another piece of paper. All right, so what actually happens in activation is the next question we want to know. So we have this plate that, let's draw where we are at the moment. We have our endothelium. So here's our endothelium, which has been disturbed, basically. Okay? And it's got this hole in it now. So here are the here's the basement membrane, which has got this hole in it. Okay, and we know that we've got this platelet that is bound here to this von Willebrand factor by its GP1B uh, receptor, uh, GP1B95 uh, receptor here. So here's our platelet, and now what's happened is that the platelet has been activated either by collagen or by, um, uh, um, by tissue factor, factor 3. Right, so what does the platelet do now that it's activated? Well, basically, it starts releasing two main things. It releases a huge number of things when it's activated. But of those things that it releases, the ones that I think excuse me, are the most important are uh, from boxane A2. So it starts producing from boxane A2, from boxane A2, uh, which we can abbreviate to TXA2, um, and it also starts releasing ADP, adenosine diphosphate. Now, what is the purpose of these two things that the platelet is releasing after it's been activated? Well, the first is that the ADP will go off to other platelets here. So here's another platelet. And other platelets will have receptors for ADP in here. Okay, so here's a receptor for ADP, the ADP receptor. And basically, ADP will bind to this ADP receptor on another platelet, and it will cause that platelet to activate. So what will happen is that that platelet will also start releasing from boxane A2, which we can denote TXA2, and ADP. Okay, So it's going to cause a chain reaction. But, of course, this is pointless if, AD, if, you know, if one of these doesn't actually do anything more than just stimulate a chain reaction. And all ADP does is stimulate the chain reaction of platelet activation, basically. It activates loads of platelets. So, the other, uh, the other product of activation from boxane A2 must be more important, basically. Okay, so what does from boxane A2 do? Well, from boxane A2 does two major things. One, it causes vasoconstriction of the blood vessel to limit the blood flow to this area where you have a huge great break in the endothelium of the blood vessel. So it's going to cause vasoconstriction to try and limit blood flow to this um, problematic area at the moment. So it's trying to stop more blood coming here and leaking out, basically. So vasoconstriction is one of its activities, but it has another role on platelets, basically. So you, this platelet, once it's activated, is going to release from boxane A2, and from boxane A2 causes the activation of another receptor in the platelet. So there's another protein that's very, very important in this platelet, which I'll denote in blue, basically. And this is the glycoprotein 2B slash 2A protein, which is really, really important for platelet aggregation. Okay, so this is glycoprotein, GP for glycoprotein, 2B um, slash 2A. 
Okay, uh, right, so what from boxane A2 does is it binds to this receptor and changes its conformation, okay? And it does this, basically, it's on its own platelet. So you release from boxane A2, and uh, from boxane A2 is going to go onto your cell membrane, and it's going to activate the GP2B slash 2A receptors, basically. It's also going to do the same thing for other platelets. So it's going to come over to this platelet over here and do the same thing. So it will have this auto-stimulatory uh, effect, and it will also go over to other platelets and activate their GP2B slash 2A proteins here. Okay, so we've got activated GP glycoprotein 2B slash 2A here as well. Now, this is essential for platelet aggregation, basically, because only well, once thromboxane A2 has activated this GP2B slash 2A receptor, can this GP2B slash 2A receptor bind to fibrinogen. So, we remember fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is one of these proteins that's within the blood that is we know being converted into fibrin when the coagulation cascade starts. But here is another really important role of uh, fibrinogen in forming uh, hemostatic plugs, basically, because we know there are two components, two major components of a hemostatic plug, uh, the platelets and the coagulation cascade, and we're going to put them both together in a later video. But uh, now what we're looking at is platelets, and fibrinogen, again, has a really important role in platelets. So let's draw a fibrinogen molecule, and it kind of has this sort of bilobed structure like this. So this is fibrinogen, and basically what can now happen is once thromboxane A2 has activated the glycoprotein 2B slash 2A, um, slash 2A um, uh, receptor, then it can bind to fibrinogen. And what happens is that fibrinogen has these two lobes. The GP2B slash 2A protein binds to a single lobe. So the other lobe can bind to another GP2A, um, 2B slash 2A receptor. So you get basically this meshwork of platelets all bound together. So I'll show you basically what happens. So a single plate that won't just have one of these GP2B slash 2A receptors, it will have loads. Let me show it covered in them, basically. So we'll draw four of them like so. Okay, so what can now happen is that all of these combine to fibrinogen. So here is fibrinogen bound to these G2B slash 2A receptors. And now the other lobes of the fibrinogen combine to GP2B slash 2A receptors on other platelets. So you can have another platelet down here, and another platelet down here, and etc. It goes on. You form a huge, great meshwork, basically. Uh, and this process of platelets sticking together because the GP2B slash 2A receptor has become active and can now bind to one of the lobes of fibrinogen uh, is known as platelet aggregation, basically. Oh dear, just finish colouring all, all of these receptors to make it try and make it a little clearer. Okay, so what's going to happen is you get these initial platelets binding to uh, the place where you had uh, disturbance of the endothelium. Oh dear, that one's been completely swallowed up. Uh, you get these initial platelets binding to the endothelium where you have this problem. That's known as platelet adhesion. The platelets then activate, which overall results in the activation of this GP2B slash 2A protein through from boxane A2. And you also get this uh, ADP to catalyze the... Um, the chain reaction, basically. Okay, uh, so um, what happens is that the platelets in the neighbor of, he of, of here all activate and express this active GP2B slash 2A uh, protein. And now what can happen is that they form one of these massive great meshworks of platelets. And this is known as platelet aggregation. And basically what you will end up with is a massive great plug of platelets. You end up with platelets all over the place, basically, in here. So let me draw that down here. So if we have the endothelium here with its hole in, what you are going to end up with 
is just platelets everywhere. And I won't show how they're bonded together because we know now that some will be bonded to the endothelium initially through this GP1B95 uh, von Willebrand factor interaction. And then the others will all be bound to each other by uh, this interaction with the GP2B slash 2A and the fibrinogen, basically. So you form a massive great meshwork of platelets all filling in this hole. And this structure here, this mesh, this, um, well, this meshwork of platelets is known as a primary hemostatic plug. Uh, okay, and we'll see how, um, basically, the coagulation cascade happens as well as this. And basically, you get fibrin deposited in the middle of all of this. And basically, when you have fibrin hot, you have a fibrin mesh as well as a platelet mesh. That is then called a secondary hemostatic plug, and it's somewhat stronger than this primary hemostatic plug. Another name for the primary hemostatic plug is a primary platelet plug. Okay, and you can see that it's very, very important in um, in stopping. Uh, blood from leaking out uh, from the um, ruptured uh, endothelium. Okay, so that's uh, how platelets adhere to the initial surface of damage and uh, then activate through this release of ADP and thromboxane A2 and then finally aggregate together by thromboxane A2 activating the GP2B slash 2A receptor which then allows uh, the platelets all to aggregate together uh, through binding to fibrinogen.